Okay, as I said before, this is the number one retake of the semester. Um, this is what people generally retake. It will be a little bit different this year. I'm leaving out 2.7. 2.7 is all word problems. And we already skipped we already skipped 1.6, which is all word problems. So you really haven't had what students have had in the past in that regard. I'm going to throw those all at the end of the second semester, of the, of the first semester. So right before you go on Christmas break, you have to test on word problems. We're going to put them all together instead of doing them two separate ones. Okay. So um, part of the reason is we've got to make sure we get through other content. And as I said, second quarter is short. It's only 39 days. That is less than five, less than five, uh, eight weeks, less than eight weeks, and that's that's not helpful. Okay, so uh, this study, uh, we be, begin by talking about parabolas, and today should be 100% review for you. But although this part is review, quadratics, 2.8 and 2.9 are new, and it's only three sections, so you will have a test come up, coming up fairly quickly. So you want to stay on top of this one. It's going to come up quick, okay? And we need to get in quickly because, again, we don't have a lot of time. So... Uh, parabolas have extreme values. They have what we call maximums and minimums. And in fact, this shape also has what we call a maximum, a local maximum, and a local minimum. And these maximums and minimums are very applicable. So if we did do the word problems, we would be encountering questions like maximizing profit. Does that sound like a good thing to do? Minimizing cost. Yeah, in fact, uh, there's a course called Operations Research and Mathematics where you get hired by businesses to do those things. And instead of working with one or two variables, you're working with, say, 125. And you got to figure out how to adjust all the variables that impact the dynamics of the business in order to maximize the profit. If you can do that, you can make six figures a year right out of college. Okay? Um, it's very lucrative. You get an OR, Operations Research, you are going to be uh, top notch. Okay? Uh, cool field to go into. Um, uh, medical. Uh, so uh, my calculus teacher in, in college, he worked at the Mayo Clinic as a math major, and, and he just basically did problems for the uh, doctors. And they came into him one time and said, hey, so we're, we've got a clog, patient with a clogged artery, and we need to do a bypass, which literally a bypass means that you take another artery and you, you kind of branch it over that clogged space. Okay? And, he, and the doctor came to my teacher and he said, hey, I want to know what angle, like what angle should we put it at in order to minimize the friction of the blood flow? Can everybody agree friction would be bad on an artery? That friction slowly wears away the line in the arteries. So we want to reduce that. And you use calculus in order to determine that. In fact, I, I actually now I take the calculus students through that problem showing me how we can actually do it. So... Mathematics is extremely powerful and useful in all sorts of studies. Maximizing, minimizing is something we do. Today we want to look at the maximum and minimum of a parabola that is in standard form. So today we do standard form. And then on Monday, or Tuesday, excuse me, we get back, we'll look at vertex form. This is vertex form right there, okay? So we've got standard form of a parabola. And a parabola has generally this shape. Okay. And this piece right here is the minimum, and it's located, what do we call that spot? That part of the parabola, it starts with a V. This is the vertex of the parabola. And there's an equation that we use in order to determine the x value of the vertex. Does anybody know what that equation is? You already know it. Nope. The quadratic formula has the vertex pinned right in it. This part is the vertex. Negative b divided by 2a. That is how you locate the vertex. Negative b divided by 2a. You've always known it. Yep, and then in order to find the y value, you plug it into the function f of negative b divided by 2a. And that gets you your y value. Everybody should be thinking about Ms. Kruger's class right now. This is where you learned that. You did a great job with it. I'll give it the vertex. Okay. Now, what is the thing that divides the parabola in half? Axis of symmetry.
And what is that axis of symmetry? It's a vertical line, so what's the equation going to be? X equals, and what's the X value passes through? Vertex, negative B divided by 2A. So once you determine the vertex, you already know the equation for the axis of symmetry. Good? Okay, another spot on the parabola would be this spot right here. We call that the y-intercept. The y-intercept occurs when x is equal to 0. So if we take 0 and plug it in for x, what do we come up with? C. Come up with the C value. So the y-intercept is the C value. What do we call those spots? X intercepts. That's where we set y equal to zero. So zero equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And then if it factors, factor it. What do we do if it doesn't factor? Quadratic formula. Now you guys spent like, you know, three, four weeks going over this in ninth grade, right? Okay, we do one day. Okay, so you also had it last year. So, does that connect with everybody a little bit? Let's try two examples. First one's going to be basic. Second one's going to be a little bit more challenging. Flip it over. All right, so here we go. We've got y is equal to 2x squared minus 8. And I'm going to start uh, determining some of the important aspects of the parabola. I'm going to start with the direction of the parabola. Does this thing go up or down? Why? Because 2 is positive, so it goes up. Now I'm going to go to the vertex. In order to determine the vertex and the other aspects of this parabola, it would be helpful to know the A, the B, and the C values. What is the A value? Those, which is Spanish for 2. What's the B value? Zero, and the C value? Negative eight. People understand why sometimes people write negative eight for the B value? That, see, there's no X, so that's what makes the B value zero. So we take negative B, which is negative zero, and we divide it by twice the A value. Negative zero divided by four is what? Zero. So this thing's centered at an X value of zero. Now, some of you guys already knew that. You're like, hey, Mr. Gantz, it's just shifted down eight units. I already know it's centered on zero. Like, I already got that. Good. You're connecting everything together. That's all right. You're a popular guy. Well, how do we determine the y value? Plug it in. Okay, so plug in zero. You get two times zero is zero minus eight is negative eight. Remember, we said shifted down eight, so you, we already know where it's at. I make a graph that goes by twos. Two, four, six, eight. Well, I can't lose Maggie as a student. Yep. Tiger Pride is just a quarter, so. All right, Maggie. She's a good kid. All right, so I've got my graph. I'm going to plot that vertex at zero, negative eight which is right here. Let her do. Yeah, you do. So I'm going to draw the vertical line that divides that in half. That's my axis of symmetry. Somebody give me the equation for the axis of symmetry. X equals zero. If you write zero, I take a half point off. It's an equation for a line. It's not a number. It's not a point. It's an equation for a line. Everybody see that? An equation better have an equal sign and a variable. Okay. All right. So I got axis. We're going to do a y-intercept. What's our y-intercept? Yeah, negative 8. That's pretty obvious, right? We've already plotted on the y-axis. So what's the only thing I left to have to come up with? The x-intercepts. 
So we're going to take this guy and set it equal to zero. And I got two options for solving it. What are my two options? Factoring or quadratic formula. Quadratic formula will work every time. Factoring works only with factors, obviously. Does this say factor? Yeah, factor is really nice. 2 times x squared minus 4, and 2 times x minus 2, and x plus 2. So you can see that the x-intercepts are plus or minus 2. You said it goes up, so hopefully I can plot these in the right spot so that it goes up. And then we got it. You put everything together. It's a way to check and verify your work, see it connect. You tell me, is this a narrow parabola or a wide parabola? So what is it that made it narrow? The vertical stretch, yeah, you can see it's stretched by a factor of two, isn't it? Okay, so that piece. Try to connect what we just did so we all see that. Could you do that kind of problem on a test? Like, if I told you that this was like the first problem on your test, would you be like yay or nay? I hope you're yay, okay, because you, you've seen it before, right? Okay, we want this part of the test to go great, like no mistakes, because the other part of the test, they're going to be newer and a little bit more challenging. All right, let's try a tougher parabola, okay? This is where we step up to our A game. You know, this is a little bit more challenging. Let's start with the direction. Down, how come? Because the x squared has a negative coefficient. That's going to make it go down. So mathematically, just to let you guys kind of understand, you know, that the 6 is also negative in front of the x, but it's the largest coefficient. Yeah, that's the, the largest uh, power. That's the one that's dominant. That's the one that makes and breaks the shape. So, so that's the one that really determines that overall shape. Go to vertex. What is negative b? Positive 6. Divided by twice the A value. What's 2 times negative 1 fourth? Negative 1 half. So dividing by negative 1 half is the same as multiplying by negative 2. Multiply by the reciprocal, and we get negative 12. What do I do to come up with the Y value? Plug it in. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, I tend to go to my calculator once I get to that type of spot. All right, so I'm going to go negative 1 over 4, and then I always put parentheses around that x value. That always makes sure I plug it in correctly. And I do a minus 6, parentheses negative 12, and then I do a plus 3, 39. So I got negative 12, 39. So I'm going to make my graph of 40 by 40. So each tick mark will be 10. And vertex is negative 12, positive 39. So I'm going to go back 12 and up 39. It's going to bring me right about there. What do you want to do next? This is the axis of symmetry. Good. Axis of symmetry is x equals negative 12. Vertical line. What do you want to do next? Y intercept, that one should be easy, right? What's Y intercept? The Y intercept happens when the X value is equal to zero. And if you plug in zero for X, you're going to get just three. It's always just the C value on the end. Very common for people to write the y value of the vertex. That's not the y intercept. It's the y value of the vertex, but not where it crosses the y axis. This thing crosses at positive 3, 
And so if I plot approximately positive 3, notice you could flip that over the axis of symmetry, okay, to kind of get another point. If you had to sketch the parabola right now, could you? Yeah. So when we come up with our x-intercepts, we want to come up with a point right over here, and we want to come up with another point right over there. So let's see what we come up with. We take this equation for our x-intercept, and we set it equal to 0. And now that's what i got to solve. Question. Like, I don't like the negative one fourth. So multiply by what? Negative four, huh? Negative four. Because watch how beautiful this is. What zero times negative four? It's still zero. Isn't that great? Look at that. Yeah. And then negative four times negative one fourth is one, right? Negative four times negative one fourth is one. I get x squared, then y. Well, 24x. Minus 12. Now, I don't want to use a quadratic formula there, so let's try that. X equals negative B. What's negative B? A 24 plus or minus the square root of 24 squared. 576 minus 4 times, what's the A value now? 1. And what's the C value? Negative 12. Divided by twice the A value. Yep, so is this going to be 576 plus 48, or is it going to be 576 minus 48? Plus 48 because of the two negatives. 576 plus 48. 624. Now, for the test, you're going to have to put your answers in simplest radical form and as a decimal. Now, the decimal part is actually pretty easy, but I won't give you a number like this large for a simplest radical form. I'm not going to do that to you. But it's, what, let's guess. What number do you think 624 is divisible by its perfect square? 64, let's try it. Uh, 624 divided by 64. Nope, try another one. 81. Nope. 6 by 4 divided by 16. Hey, 16 and 39. That looks good, huh? So let's use that. Negative 24 plus or minus square root of 16 times square root of 39 all divided by 2. What is the square root of 16? So negative 24 plus or minus 4 root to 39 divided by 2. 24, 4, and 2 are all divisible by 2. So if you divide by 2, you get negative 12 plus or minus 2 roots of 39. That's simplest radical form. Let's make them into decimals. In order to make them into decimals, all you have to do is just type that into your calculator. Negative 12 plus 2 roots of 39. 0.48. And then we will do negative 12 minus 2 roots of 39. And we get negative 24.48. So this is a great way to check your work. Does 0.48 match up with the part where we thought it would cross the x-axis? Yeah, right there, right on the other side. And the negative 24.48 
yeah, that would be, you know, right over on that other side there. So looks like it all works out. There's a nice sketch in my parabola. Question. This one? So if this is the axis of symmetry, then whatever this distance here is, which was, was 12 units, right? So I could move then another one over this way, 12 units. That will produce a dot right there, okay? Got your worksheet for you. Now, you guys got how many days off? You got five, okay? You got five. Do you have a ton of homework over this time? What do you got? You got to read, okay, so you guys got to read some books. What else? Okay, I know you got this. You got one worksheet, okay? So hopefully find some time over break. Sit down for an hour, okay? Work it out. Come on back with your questions. Half an hour, 40 minutes, I don't know. Some people are going to skip my class on Tuesday. What's on Tuesday? So some of you guys just need to dress the way you normally do.